this is this is one classification okay according to the type of relay motion according to the type of relay motion we have turning pair sliding pair screw pair spherical pair and rolling pair okay next slide oh. according to the type of contact kinematic pairs according to the type of contact according to the type of contact according to the type of contact so we have lower pair lower pair lower pair and first one lower pair when i say lower pair the pair the elements of the pair will have surface or area contact okay lower pair this side only this elements of the pair will have elements of the pair will have surface or area contact elements of the pair will have surface or area contact elements of the pair will have surface or area contact okay if you have surface or area contact it's considered as a lower pair for an example 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 so we have seen turning pair right turning pair is a circular rod in a circular hole with two collars so if you look at the contact between the shaft and this particular circular block it is surface contact okay so turning pair is a lower pair okay and if you see the sliding pair the contact between piston and cylinder you can imagine that so that's also a surface contact sliding pair is also lower pair right an example example turning pair turning pair sliding pair sliding pair screw 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 pair is also a, a lower pair okay you will be having surface contact in the grooves next one spherical pair spherical pair these are all lower pairs okay this is second classification okay the second classification turning pair is a lower pair sliding pair is a lower pair screw pair is a lower pair spherical pair is a lower pair okay next one higher pair higher pair higher pair higher pair the side of this elements of the pair will have elements of the pair will have elements of the pair will have point or line contact elements of the pair will have point or line contact if you are having point or line contact it's a higher pair okay this is a higher pair example example disc rolling on a surface disc rolling on a surface it's a higher pair disc rolling on a surface it's a higher pair disc rolling on a surface it's a higher pair disc rolling on a surface it's a higher pair next shadow cam follower cam and follower if you see the type of contact it's a higher pair cam follower it's a higher pair next shadow pair of gears in mesh uh sort of not only cam and knife edge you can take any follower what kind of follower faces we are having so it's a knife edge follower or roller face follower or a curved face follower you can take any kind of follower the contact between cam and follower is a point contact okay or cam follower cam follower will form a higher pair pair of gears pair of gears in mesh pair of gears in mesh they also form a higher pair so what kind of contact we have between pairs of gears what kind of contact will have between pair of gears in mesh we'll have a line contact okay for pair of gears in mesh so if you see the side view so it's it, it appears to be a point contact so like this but it's not a point contact okay it appears to be a point contact like this but you will be having a line contact okay you will be having a line contact along the width of the face you will be having a line contact okay it's not point contact so cap and pen you can say it's a turning pair relate to motion is a uh, pure turning okay it's a turning pair okay it's a turning pair i say it's a lower pair okay Yeah, it's not. It's a lower pair, pen and cap. Okay. 
the same. Yeah? So pair of gates in mesh will have a line contact. So I'm developing two equivalent mechanisms. Just tell me how many number of links are here. How many number of links are here? This is fixed link link number one. This is fixed link link number two. Link number one. This can be rotated with respect to this. This is link number two. This is link number three. Three links are here. And if you see one and two are connected by a turning pair. So one and two are connected by a turning pair. Turning pair is a lower pair. So these two are connected by a point contact. This is a higher pair. So one and three are connected by a sliding pair. Okay, sliding pair. A sliding pair is a lower pair. Turning pair is a lower pair. Turning pair is a lower pair and sliding pair is a lower pair. Okay. Number of links are three. So I am developing an equivalent mechanism. Whenever I say equivalent mechanism, so both the mechanisms should have same degrees of freedom, and at the same time, for both the mechanisms, the kind of transformation should also be the same. So the transformation of motion should also be the same. So here, rotary motion is getting transformed into reciprocating motion of the follower. Here also the same thing. Rotary motion of this crank is getting converted into a reciprocating motion of the piston. This is fixed link link number one. This is link number two. This is link number three. This is link number four. This is link number one. So here, if you look at this one, so this is having a combination of both higher and lower pairs. Whereas this one, if you see, so one and two are connected by a lower pair. This is lower pair, turning pair. Two and three are connected by a turning pair. So turning pair is a lower pair. Three and four are connected by a turning pair. So turning pair is a lower pair. One and four are connected by a sliding pair. Sliding pair is a lower pair. Here, all the pairs are lower pair. So what I what I did is I just uh, found a equivalent mechanism which consists of only lower pairs. It consists of only lower pairs. If you look at this lower pair, this lower pair is identical to this lower pair, and this lower pair is identical to this lower pair. So I can say like this: I replace this higher pair with two lower pairs, one lower pair here and one lower pair here. So in planar mechanisms, in planar mechanisms, if you want to generate an equivalent mechanism. With only lower pairs, you need to replace one higher pair with two lower pairs. Or I can say like this: for planar mechanisms, one higher pair is equivalent to two lower pairs. One higher pair is equivalent to two lower pairs. Let's try now like this: one higher pair is equivalent to two lower pairs. This is only for planar mechanisms, okay? Only for planar mechanisms. This is valid only for planar mechanisms. Okay? Whenever I say planar mechanism, so all the links will be moving in multiple parallel planes. Okay? If all the links are moving in multiple parallel planes or in a single plane, so then it's called as a planar mechanism. In planar mechanism, there will be no motion perpendicular to the plane. All the links will be moving in a single plane or multiple parallel planes, but there will be no motion perpendicular to the plane. If there is any motion perpendicular to the plane. So that kind of mechanisms are considered spatial mechanisms. Planar mechanism is one in which there is motion only in a single plane or multiple parallel planes. There will be no motion perpendicular to the plane. Okay. The statement is valid only for planar mechanisms. Okay. Next slide. Next slide. Wrapping pair. Wrapping pair. Wrapping pair. So this pair is not discussed in most of the textbooks. Only in few textbooks this is discussed. Okay. Wrapping pair. So there are certain kind of categories which fall under this. A planar mechanism. So the links will not move perpendicular to the plane. Okay. All the links will be moving in a single plane or multiple parallel planes. So maybe multiple parallel planes. So if you see this. You can see the links. The links are moving in multiple parallel planes. Okay, or I can say this one. The links will be moving in multiple parallel planes, but there is no motion perpendicular to the plane. Okay, so they are connected in multiple parallel planes. So everything is in different plane. Okay, these are plane. No motion perpendicular to the plane. If there is any motion perpendicular to the plane, it's a spatial mechanism. Right on wrapping pair. Wrapping pair. Wrapping pair. You can see the name itself. It's wrapping. One link wraps over the other link. Okay. Wrapping pair. One link wraps over the other link. One link wraps over the other link. 
example 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 belt drives belt drives belt wraps over the pulley rope drives rope wraps over the pulley chain drives chain and sprocket chain and sprocket belt belt and pulley or rope and pulley these are all wrapping pairs only this this all this kind of categories of fall under wrapping pair okay so the definition may give a misconception okay so it's like one link wraps over the other link so but spherical pair also the same thing but spherical pair doesn't fall into this category okay only this kind of things belt drives rope drives chain drives these are called as wrapping pairs okay wrapping pairs and if you see the chain and sprocket so the contact between chain and sprocket is multiple point contacts okay you will be having multiple point contacts or if you go for a rope uh, belt drive or if you go for a rope drive in a rope drive you will be having a line contact between belt and the pulley and if you go for a belt drive in a belt drive so you will be having contact between belt and pulley that contact is it seems to be a surface contact but so in comparison with total surface area of the belt the surface of the belt which is in contact with the pulley is very less so it is considered to be a higher pair okay it's not higher pair exactly it is considered to be very closer to higher pair so some pairs will have uh, some kind of categories like chain and sprocket you are having multiple point contacts a rope drive will have a line contact a belt drive is also considered to be a kind of line contact okay this side of like this wrapping pair is considered to be wrapping pair is considered to be closer to higher pair wrapping pair is considered to be closer to higher pair so in ias once there was a question so they gave belt and rope but wrapping pair is not given in the options if wrapping pair is not given in the options belt and rope is considered as higher pair okay yeah wrapping pair so any planar mechanism will have uh, links in multiple parallel planes okay if you have any mechanism where the links are not in multiple parallel planes or the links are moving perpendicular to the plane they are not considered as planar mechanisms they are categorized as spatial mechanisms yeah go on that can also be considered as a wrapping pair so but we consider that as a higher pair okay? so depending upon what kind of bearing you are you are using either it's a rolling contact bearing or sliding contact bearing we classify that as higher and lower pairs you can have motion in different parallel planes that's what i'm saying all the links should move in a single plane or multiple parallel planes no link should move perpendicular to the plane now well, just observe this okay next slide up next classification next classification according to the type of closure according to the type of closure according to the type of closure so how they are connected i can say according to the type of closure according to the type of closure the side of like this according to the type of closure according to the type of closure under this right first one self closed pair self closed pair self closed pair the side like this elements of the pair are held together elements of the pair are held together because of their geometry elements of the pair are held together because of their geometry elements of the pair are held together because of their geometry elements of the pair are held together because of the geometry so i can say if i take a ball inside a socket or if i take a turning pair so they are held together because of their geometry okay that's why it's called as self closed pair they are held together because of their geometry next side on like this elements of the pair elements of the pair cannot be separated elements of the pair cannot be separated without the destruction of without a distinction of at least one element of the pair 
without destruction of at least one element of the pair. Elements of the pair cannot be separated without destruction of at least one element of the pair. Without destruction of at least one element of the pair, you cannot separate them. Okay. Example. 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 Spherical pair. Spherical pair. Turning pair. Spherical pair, turning pair. These are self-closed pair. Okay. Self-closed pairs. So if you want to separate them, you need to break at least one. Okay. Next slide. Force closed pair. Force closed pair. Force closed pair. Force closed pair. Elements of the pair are held together. Elements of the pair are held together because of some external force. Because of some external force. Like spring force or gravitational force. Elements of the pair are held together because of some external force. Like spring force or gravitational force. So if you if the contact is because of some external force, we call it as a forceful contact, okay? It's called as a force closed pair. Force closed pair. So if I take an example of a cap follower mechanism. So if there is no gravity, so the follower will not maintain contact with the cam, okay? So the follower is maintaining contact with the cam because of gravitational force. If there is no gravitational force, so the follower which goes up when the cam is rotated, so will not come back or it will lose contact with the cam. And at higher speeds, to make sure that the follower is not losing contact, so we go for a retaining spring, something like this. So if you see the cam follower pair, so this is a force closed pair, okay? This is a force closed pair. If you look at the door on the door frame, door on the door frame, door on the door frame are held together because of some external force, because of the door closer, I can say. Door closer is a force closed pair, and cam follower higher pair is a force closed pair. And if you see a pair of gears in mesh, pair of gears in mesh is also a force closed pair. So when I say pair of gears in mesh, so these gears are held in bearings, okay? These gears are held in some bearings. And when you rotate one gear, so motion is transmitted to the other gear by engaging the tooth. By engaging the tooth. So if I fix the centers of these two gears, or I can say these two gears are mounted on some bearings like this. So bearings are nothing but the fixed centers, okay? So when I rotate this one, the other gear rotates, okay? If it's not fixed, I can say it is free to move. So I can say when you rotate the when you rotate this gear, this gear will not rotate. Okay, this gear just moves away. So this gear is held forcefully here, and motion is transmitted. Okay, when our motion is transmitted from one gear to another gear, so there will be an axial force acting like this. Okay, there will be an axial force acting like this. We will be calculating that in gears. Okay, there will be an axial force which is trying to separate the center distance, but since the shafts are held in bearings. So it will not move apart, okay? It's a force closed pair. It's a force closed pair. This is also a force closed pair. So I'm just saying that the contact between elements of the pair is because of some external force. It can be any field, okay? It can be magnetic field or electric field or whatever you think. But basically, we talk about mechanical things, okay? Force closed is same as unclosed. Yes or no? Yes or no? Contact between elements of the pair is because of some external force. For example, higher pair of cam follower mechanism, higher pair of cam follower mechanism, door closer, pair of gears in mesh, pair of gears in mesh. Okay, these are different uh, uh, types of kinematic pairs. Okay, these are different types of kinematic pairs. So you understood what is a kinematic link? We have seen what is a kinematic link and then we have seen uh, di different types of constraint motions and we have seen a kinematic pair. Okay? A combination of two links is called as a kinematic pair. Okay? Next seven, kinematic chain. Kinematic chain. Kinematic chain. Whenever I say kinematic chain, it's a combination of links so such that we will get a closed chain. Okay? 
a combination of links uh, where we form a closed chain, we call it as a kinematic chain. Okay. Just start on kinematic chain. <coughs> if all the links are connected, if all the links are connected in such a way that, if all the links are connected in such a way that, first link is connected to the last link, first link is connected to the last link, either directly or indirectly, first link is connected to the last link either directly or indirectly, in order to form a closed chain, in order to form a closed chain, and if all the relative motions, and if all the relative motions inside the chain, and if all the relative motions inside the chain are constrained, if all the relative motions inside the chain are constrained, then <clears throat> then such a chain, then such a chain is called as kinematic chain. When such a chain is called as kinematic chain, if all the links are connected in such a way that first link is connected to the last link, either directly or indirectly, in order to form a closed chain, and if all the relative motions inside the chain are constrained, then such a chain is known as kinematic chain. Then such a chain is known as kinematic chain. Okay. So, <clears throat> whatever is a kinematic chain, it's a combination of links. So, they are connected such that uh, you will get a closed chain. Okay. So, this is called as a four bar chain. So, you can take five links, it's five bar chain. So, if I have a slider, it's called as a slider crank chain. If I have two sliders, it's called as a double slider crank chain. And these are the names given. Okay. Can we say form loop by links? Yeah, it's a kind of, it's a closed chain with the links, okay. Kinematic links with some closed chains with some relative motion is called as a, kin as a kinematic chain. Any closed chain having relative motions is a kinematic chain, okay. So if you have a closed chain and there are no relative motions, it's not called as a kinematic chain. It's a lock chain, okay. So this is a kinematic chain, a closed chain, okay. Now say here, I want to use this kinematic chain. What I'm doing is I'm applying some force over here. If I apply some force here, so you will be thinking that when I apply some force here, this rotates and that reciprocates. That doesn't happen, okay? So since nothing is fixed here, if I apply a force here, and if I assume the contact between this mechanism and the board is frictionless, if I apply some force here for the slightest force, all the four links will move in this direction as a rigid body, okay? Here also the same thing. If you apply a small force here, all the four links will move in that direction as a rigid body. So we cannot use this uh, kinematic chain unless we fix at least one link of this kinematic chain. I am fixing one link of this kinematic chain and which link you will fix in this kinematic chain is of your choice. We can fix any link. By fixing different links, we will be getting different types of related motions. We call them as different mechanisms, okay. So I am fixing this link. When I fix this link, so I can rotate this link. So when I rotate this link, I can say this reciprocates. So you can fix this link and you can free this link. So then it will be a different mechanism. You can fix this link and you can free other links. That will be a different mechanism. So here also the same thing, there are four links. So maybe the links may be of different sizes like this. The links may be of different sizes. So one is the longest, one is the shortest and other links. You can fix any link in this. By fixing different links, you will be getting different kinds of behavior. Maybe when I fix this link, so this will be rotating 360 degrees and this will be rotating 360 degrees. Whereas when I free this link and when I fix this link, this will be rotating 360 degrees and this will be just oscillating like this. So by fixing different links of a mechanism, a kinematic chain, we will be getting different kinds of related to motion between the links. We call them as different mechanisms. So if there are n number of links in a kinematic chain, we can fix each link at a time and we can get n different mechanisms. We call them as inversions of kinematic chain. Let's try it down like this. To use a kinematic chain, to use a kinematic chain, we need to fix at least one link of the kinematic chain. To use a kinematic chain, we need to fix at least one link of the kinematic chain. Kinematic chain with one link fixed is called as mechanism. Kinematic chain with one link fixed is called as mechanism. Kinematic chain with one link fixed is called as mechanism. Next try down like this. Different mechanisms, different mechanisms obtained by, obtained by 
fixing different links of a kinematic chain, different mechanisms obtained by fixing different links of kinematic chain are known as its inversions, are known as its inversions, are known as its inversions. Different mechanisms obtained by fixing different links of a kinematic chain are known as its inversions. Are known as inversions of kinematic chain. Are known as inversions of kinematic chain. Are known as inversions of kinematic chain. If there are n links in a mechanism, how many inversions are possible? If there are n links in a kinematic chain, how many inversions are possible for that kinematic chain? Yeah. 